they killed another buffalo. Yeah, and Gamas are doing well with buffalo for lion pride that aren't meant to. When I first got here, I was told that the Angamas don't hunt buffalo. It's the second buffalo kill I've seen them with. Looks like quite a large, a fully grown female. The buffalo, that is not the lioness. That's definitely a fully grown lioness. And that kill is two days old. Morning. So there we go. I'm going to settle here for now. Hopefully the cubs decide to pop out and come and have some breakfast. Just goes to show. People make strange assumptions about animals at times. Oh, that smells delicious, doesn't it, Manu? Doesn't that just give you a burning desire to eat some breakfast? Hmm, yum. Okay, that's at least a day old, judging by the scent that's wafting over us. Oh, it's not too bad. What are you trying to do, girl? <laughs> She's trying to get to one of the more edible parts of the buffalo. Buffalo skin is exceptionally thick. For those of you that are watching these safaris, perhaps for the first time, it's no easy feat feeding off a buffalo. It actually takes serious effort if you watch the way that lions eat. And typically getting through the skin is quite difficult for them. They have to go for, well generally they'll go for the soft areas underneath the tail or the armpits and the face. And then once they get to a certain point, you know, that skin, the connective tissue that holds the skin onto the rest of the body is very, very strong. So it involves a lot of tugging, pushing and pulling to get to the muscles and the meat underneath. And sometimes it's just not worth the effort, is it, girl? That's... Lions will go for the easiest part of the meal first, and of course the most nutritious, so the organs. The cubs will generally get stuck with the slightly less delicious parts, like nibbling on the nose and the face and the ears. And from there, they'll eat their way around the hindquarters, the ribs, and the shoulders. They generally don't bother with legs. And their teeth adapted for the way in which they have to feed as well as hunt. And that very, very serrated tongue also helps to peel away the meat from the bone. And what she's doing there is instinct. So one of the things that lions don't like to eat is the stomach contents of the buffalo. So they'll pull that out first, and generally during the chaos of the feeding, the stomach contents will basically spill out across the grass. And if you watch lions in these sorts of areas, they'll spend a lot of time instinctively covering that up. And whilst I don't think it does much to cover the scent, I think that's the idea behind it. Leopards will do it too, and your cats at home would do it as well. Also means they don't have to roll in it. Joe, lions will survive in the way that all other animals do as well. So yes, if that meat is rotten, rotten to the point of being utterly to us unimaginable to actually feed upon the lions will eat it a couple of years ago when I first oh we've been joined by a cub how lovely a couple of years ago when I first started with Safari Live it was just just after that that the Birmingham males took over morning the Birmingham males took over the territory from the Matimbas and during that time the Inkahuma pride was basically running scared and two of the females were separate from the rest of the pride, and they, I don't know if they killed a buffalo or if they actually found it already dead. But we watched them feed off it for three days, and let me tell you, by the end of that, in 40 degree temperatures, it was rank. It was green and slimy, and the lionesses stank after feeding off it, but they did feed off it. Imagine having an immune system like that. Imagine how sick we'd be if we fed off meat like that. <clears throat> we, of course, have become accustomed to our very sanitary way of living when you compare it to these sorts of creatures. They've got to do what they've got to do to survive. You have to wonder about their taste buds, though. Does it taste nice when it's rotten? 
do they not even really register what it tastes like? Yes, you get that buffalo, little cub. Kill it. Kill it. Good job. Yes, that you're not quite big enough to take on a live one yet, but you can practice with the dead one. Eh, boring. Go and find some cousins and siblings to play with. Look at the belly on that cub. If it eats any more, that belly's going to touch the ground. We'll have to roll around. We're going to stick where we are for now. Um, I think the rest of the cubs are probably further ahead of us, but we, we were not going to be able to get there. Mm. Michael, that's a good question. So Michael's question is, I should probably go over this shoulder, but let me go like this. Um, Michael, you want to know if the lions... <laughs> Look, these... The lions will, in this area, will use the luggers, which is the, the, for those of you that are new, these sort of dried up river systems, in the same way that lions and Kruger use the paved roads. In, in other words, to make the animals fall down. Yes, I think more than that, I think that they utilize, yes, I think they probably would if they could, if they were chasing them towards the lugger. But most of the time, I think they actually use them to hide. Because when we first started working here, I mean, we've just spoken about this, the grass was as tall as I am. Great for stalking. Now it's gone, and they have to use a combination of the bushes, like the one that they found over there, where the, they eventually brought that buffalo down, and the luggers. And if you watch lions and leopards stalking out here, a lot of the time they will dip down into the lugger, and then every now and again they have to sort of pop their head to see where the animals are that they're hunting, and then duck back down again. So I think it's a combination of cover and potentially making the animals fall down. They def the hyenas definitely use the rocks of the mountainous escarpment and the roads as well. They still use the roads, even though they're not tarred, but they are the, the sides of the road are particularly high to discourage people from off-roading where they can't off-road. And I think that the hyenas have learned to use that as well, utilize that as well. Amazing the way that animals adapt in two different countries, two different ecosystems. Let's go back and visit the second of those. <laughs> 